Good afternoon. On behalf of the Home Depot Foundation and the Atlanta History Center, welcome to the dedication of the Atlanta Veterans Park. I'm Major Scott Delius with the Georgia Army National Guard. If you haven't done so already, please turn off your cell phones. And I'd like to direct your attention to the water stations we have over here. And there's also a medic under the trees if, if you need that. We recognize it's a hot day and we're going to try and get through this really quickly. Following the dedication, we'll have a barbecue and everyone's invited. I returned from, from Afghanistan to Atlanta six years ago yesterday. I proudly call myself an Afghanistan veteran. But the word veteran is confusing to those who have not served in the military. People often ask me, what does it mean to be, to be a veteran? What does the word veteran mean? Does it mean that you've actually served in a war zone? that you've actually been in combat? Or does it mean something else? Actually, the word has a much broader meaning. And that's the purpose of this Veterans Park, to honor all veterans, all of those who've served. You see, a veteran is anyone who has worn the uniform and is who has sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States with their very life if necessary. So it doesn't matter if you've been drafted or if you volunteered if you served in combat, in the Cold War, in a declared war, in an operation, or in a conflict, or if you helped your fellow citizens at a disaster here at home, you're a veteran. You're part of a special bond of brothers and sisters who share special pride in knowing that you served your country when she called, whether it was during war or peace. This is your park. This is your place. Welcome home. At this time, I'd like to introduce the CEO of the Atlanta History Center, Mr. Sheffield Hale. Thank you, Scott. Good afternoon and welcome. Today, I'm honored to be here with our veterans, their families, and members of our community as we officially dedicate Veterans Park at the Atlanta History Center to all the men and women who have served and continue to serve the United States of America. We are humbled to be the stewards of this new Veterans Park. It may be on the Atlanta History Center campus, but this park belongs to the veterans and their families. Just as we hold our collections in trust, we are stewards of this park. 
for our veterans, and we're eager to see how this space will be used by our community over time. Our hope is that Veterans Park will help foster stronger connections between veterans, their families, and the wider community. The best way we can build these connections is through sharing the stories and the oral histories of veterans. A cornerstone of Veterans Park at the Atlanta History Center, and perhaps the most poignant personal connection to our country's military history, are the stor stories and oral histories of veterans featured throughout the park. Through a partnership with the Library of Congress Veterans Oral History Project, the Atlanta History Center has been collecting oral histories for over a decade, and we're still actively collecting those stories today. I hope above all that Veterans Park and the stories it tells will serve as a reminder to those of us who are not veterans of the price of freedom that our country has had to pay over and over again. History teaches us that we will continue to pay this price in the future, and this park will remain here as a testament to the shared sacrifices of our veterans and their families for many years to come. Our outstanding partner in this endeavor has been the Home Depot Foundation, without whose generosity and commitment to veterans and vision with respect to this project, we would not be here today. Please join me in thanking and welcoming the president of the Home Depot Foundation, Ms. Kelly Caffarelli. Hi, good afternoon. So glad to see everyone out on this beautiful day, and I feel a little guilty for being in the shade. Um, so thank you all for being here. And it's really an honor to be representing the Home Depot, the Home Depot Foundation, and our 300,000 employees across the country. And we have a special connection with veterans because among those associates, we have 35,000 that are veterans. And at, at any given time, about 1,500 are actively deployed. Additionally, the Home Depot Foundation is in the midst of a five-year, $80 million commitment to ensure every veteran has a safe place to call home. We took on that mission in 2011, and in just two short years, we've supported the building and repair of over 7,000 units of housing for veterans and their families. We haven't done that alone. We've partnered with great nonprofit organizations across the country, like Operation Homefront, Simper Five Fund, and here in Atlanta, Veterans Empowerment Organization and St. Jude's Recovery Center. From elderly World War II veterans living on fixed incomes who need help making repairs on their homes, to formerly homeless veterans who need transitional housing and services to begin a successful life again to wounded warriors who need modifications so that they can come home and live comfortably. Our funds and our volunteer efforts are making a difference in the lives of our veterans across the country. As part of our commitment to Atlanta and to our veterans, we're honored to be able to be a part of the creation of this park. While the majority of our dollars go to fund housing projects, we also see the tremendous value of creating living memorials like this. While none of us take for granted the sacrifices our veterans make, I'm not sure everyone knows about it. It's not that we've forgotten. I'm not sure everyone ever knew. And this is a wonderful way to help make sure that we're building a tribute, but also a truly unique teaching tool for all generations to connect us to the history of service and sacrifice that enables us to enjoy our freedoms. I also hope that this is a peaceful oasis for veterans and their families who visit, an opportunity for them to look around and to see their service honored in such a living, breathing, physical way for generations to come. I'd like to end today by sending our personal thanks and gratitude to you, Sheffield, wherever you are. There you are. And to his entire team. You know, on v Veterans Day last year, he told us that by Memorial Day, he could have a beautiful park here. And we told him to go for it, and he did it. So to every service member and veteran here today, to those of you who have lost loved ones in the line of service, thank you. 
And I hope you see that we don't just say thanks, we show our appreciation. You served us all bravely, and we hope now we're having a little part in serving you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise for the invocation? I'd like to introduce Chaplain McAlilly, U.S. Naval Academy graduate and Navy veteran. Chaplain McAlilly performed the invocation at the 2000 dedication of the Vietnam Memorial at this site, so we're honored to have him here today. Chaplain. Let's pray. Heavenly Fathers, we gather together at the close of this day. We pause once again to lift our hearts before you as we remember the many men and women who have died in order to preserve our nation and to uphold the values of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for which it was established. Accept our gratitude, Father, and make us, we humbly beseech you, more worthy of their sacrifice and the burdens of loss borne by their families by helping us to follow more closely the faith that guided them and all of our forebears as we seek to carry the standard of truth forward in our world today. We especially ask you to bless our ceremony today as we dedicate these soils and this new memorial park, representing our human battles, and make them to be for us a truly sacred symbol of our commitment to you as our creator, both in their memory and in honor of our nation. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to introduce our next speaker. Governor Nathan Deal has a long history of service to his community as a prosecutor, judge, state senator, U.S. congressman, and now as the 82nd governor of the great state of Georgia. Governor Deal is also a part of that special band of brothers and sisters entitled to call themselves veterans because he himself served in the United States Army. As governor, he serves as the commander-in-chief of the Georgia National Guard and its 14,000 airmen and soldiers. We are honored to have him today here at this dedication. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Governor Nathan Deal. Thank you, Major, Major Delius. I am honored to be here. I didn't have far to come today. <laughs> Commissioner and I have been at several ceremonies over this Memorial Day weekend, and it is certainly an honor to be here for this one. Memorial Day is a special day. I can't think of a more appropriate time to dedicate a park such as this than on Memorial Day. And thanks go to the Veterans History and the Vietnam Veterans Legacy Projects, along with the very generous donation from the Home Depot Foundation working with the Atlanta History Center to make this a reality. It is certainly something that I think all of us will be very proud of. Just a couple of days ago, we had a ceremony at the state capitol in which we recognized 26 Georgians who lost their life during this past year. That is quite a few. And of course, they joined the hundreds and thousands of others who have given their lives in the service of our country. I am told that this will be an interactive way of young people being able to hear and to be explained to them some of the stories that are associated with those who've served our country. I think that is altogether appropriate. Sometimes a name on a wall is not enough to be able to convey the true meaning of the sacrifice, to be able to hear stories, to understand the circumstances and the hardships and the sacrifices that go along with military service, especially in time of war, is a very important message to be conveyed to our next generation. So I am very pleased that we have this here I believe that it will serve us well. You know, as we look at the headstones in cemeteries all across our country that commemorate those who have lost their life in the service of our country, what we sometimes fail to understand is that they represent a limb on their family tree that has been severed in the great storm of conflict. 
the families that are associated with them will have those scars forever. And to the families who are here today to recognize and commemorate your loved one, I thank you for allowing them to serve and for supporting them during their time of service. I dare say there are very few, if any, here today who do not know or have a family member or a loved one or a friend who has served and in many cases who has been sacrificed in the cause of freedom. So thank you for being here. I am honored to be with you on this very special day. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the National Anthem and Pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce Pete Wheeler, the Georgia Commissioner for Veterans Affairs. He served in the U.S. Army Infantry during World War II, and he has served as the Georgia Commissioner for Veterans Affairs under 12 governors. Please welcome Commissioner Wheeler as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join with me as we pledge allegiance to the greatest flag flying anywhere in the world. The flag of the United States of America. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing while the colors reposition. My name is Max Torrance, and I am a proud member of the Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association. And I see uh, several members of my association have joined us here today, uh, all wearing a similar dress. Uh, we will uh, be available to render aid as necessary. You can count on a Vietnam vet. It's an honor to be here today to participate in the dedication of this beautiful park. And I want to tell you, you're about to witness a ceremony that when you get home tonight, you're going to tell your friends and neighbors they should have been here. And going forward, every Memorial Day, you will remember what you saw here today. It's a special privilege for me to introduce our speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Lester, United States Army, retired. Rick was the chairman of this committee when this park was originally conceived 13 years ago this month. 
It is fitting that he is here today to dedicate this park as a tribute to veterans past, present, and future. Rick has a long history of distinguished service to our country. He is a 26-year veteran of the United States Army, serving as an enlisted soldier. For you Army guys, you'll know he's an 11 Bravo, hua. Serving as an aviation warrant officer, and then an officer in both the armor and aviation branches during his career. Rick served two tours in Vietnam as an attack helicopter pilot, punctuated by a 10-month stay at Walter Reed Army Hospital while recovering from his injuries sustained in Vietnam, and he'd be happy to tell you about that stay. Rick is a master Army aviator with more than 3,000 hours of helicopter flight time. He has been awarded the Legion of Merit with Oak Leaf Cluster, the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Bronze Star with Oak Leaf Cluster, Cluster, and he holds 22 Air Medals along with numerous other awards. That's what he did for us in the military. Those of you who followed the news after the tragic bombing in our Olympic Park in 1996 may remember an NBC News story about a retired Army helicopter pilot who rendered medical aid to those wounded in the explosion. That soldier was Rick Lester. Amid the chaos following the expl explosion, Rick used his military skills to immediately begin treating the wounded around him until paramedics arrived. His actions were caught on camera by a news crew filming the park and received national coverage on NBC. News anchor Tom Brookall, who knows something about warriors in combat, called Rick a hero for his life-saving actions that night. Rick would say he was just doing what he was trained to do. Over the past nine years, Rick has continued to serve his country as a volunteer and fundraiser for the USO at the Atlanta airport. Greeting our troops as they return from combat, a true patriot, supporting our soldiers and the cause of freedom as he has done for so many years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a great American and my wingman, Lieutenant Colonel Rick Lester. Thank you very much. My wingman set me up here. I hope I don't let him down. Thanks a lot, Max. I'll pay you back. I'm honored and humbled to be here today. Anytime I can stand with fellow veterans, I'm truly honored. And speaking of fellow veterans, Governor Deal, Commissioner Wheeler, thank you for being with us today. Also, Sheffield, I appreciate uh, your trust in allowing me to be a part of this. And thanks for the great job you're doing here at uh, the History Center. And um, Mrs. Caporelli, throughout my 26 years in the Army, it was not unusual to sometimes hear frustrated soldiers make the comment along the lines of, they always say nothing is too good for the soldier, and that's usually what we get. Well, that is, not cer that is certainly not true here today, not here. The Home Depot Foundation's generous grant of $500,000 certainly lets everyone know that you care about veterans, and that means so much to all of us. Uh, one of the helmets we are using here today belongs to um, a Colonel Ruggles who served in the 4th Infantry Division. He wore that helmet ashore at Utah Beach on D-Day. The, tr the um, motto of the 4th Infantry Division is deeds, not words, and I think that fits the Home Depot Foundation. I learned about service to country through the actions of my family members. My mom's father served in World War I. Her brother was a Marine who was killed in action at the island of Saipan. My dad earned the Silver Star in Long Beach on D-Day and um, served at the Berlin Airlift, Korea, and Vietnam, spending 33 years on active duty. His brother was aboard the USS Hornet in World War II when Doolittle's Raiders were launched and on the Hornet when it sank after the Battle of Midway. I always wanted to serve my country and dreamed of flying as a military aviator. That dream was realized when I graduated from flight school in 1968. Everyone from that era knows uh, when you finish helicopter training where you were going. And I went to Vietnam, I was a 20-year-old warrant officer. Arriving in Vietnam, I was cocky. Hey, I was an aviator. And was invincible, and I lasted for four months before being medevaced to a place called Walter Reed Army Hospital where I learned the true meaning of perseverance. I saw some amazing things there and hold the medical staff of the military in high esteem. When I left home for um, the military, my dad told me to keep a journal. He told me I would see horror in combat that would be difficult to comprehend. 
and even more difficult to explain to the layman. He said, I would have two choices. I could let those things affect me in a negative way and hang over me like a dark cloud all my life, or I'd let them affect me in a positive way and temper me like good steel and make me stronger for the experience. And that's what I attempted to do. He said my time wouldn't be my own. He wanted me to promise that I would make time during the day to close my eyes, think of my God, say our family prayer, remember my standards, and order my thoughts so that I could purge them in the journal. I didn't think much of that word purge at the time, but later I could see that was his way of saying, speak to what you saw, but move on. That's what I did, staying in the service for 26 years, for two tours in Vietnam, two tours in Korea, two tours in Germany, and working in some unbelievable jobs and some, with some unbelievable people. And that's what I highlight most in my journal, the people with whom I served. In 2000, two of those men with whom I served met, were missing in action for over 29 years. They were recovered, and I was asked to speak at their funeral at Arlington National Cemetery. Everybody said, use your journal and tell people what they were like. So I promised I would do it. And my dad had spoke of bonding, but he never, he said, there's no, until you've experienced it, you won't know the strength of that word as a veteran. I'd like to read a few comments from my notes that day at Arlington. Through there, though some words have been necessary, there has never been a good one. And, there, and true warriors know there never will be. The cost, the cost of war is great. It robs nations of their most precious resource. They're young. It also has a way of bringing out the best in men. War strips men to their most basic moral standards. Facades are quickly torn away and you are dredged as your true self, good or bad. Those who knew these men saw them in that light and tell you they were truly dedicated, strong, and courageous. In the violence of that war, we also shared our fear and frustration, endured physical pain, and the bitter experience of losing friends. We came to know indefinable fatigue from seemingly endless hours of flying in the most demanding conditions, yet if we weren't flying, we were not happy. Though for the most part, we dealt with the complexity, confusion, and violence of battle in our own way, it was understood there was no shame in showing your emotion. We endured and became stronger for it. We were sometimes hard on each other, but it was with purpose, and we knew we could turn to each other for anything. We were in this thing together, and our strength would come from our commitment to each other and to our unit. We learned a special trust common only to those who learned to hide their fear and willingly place their lives at risk, not just for the cause, but for those with whom they served. The common theme was a bond of mutual respect and unspoken love and friendship forged and tempered through the trials of battle. You realize once you had fought for them that freedom and life are indeed very special. You no longer took things for granted. You noticed for the first time how really beautiful and intense the sunrise can be and how nice it was to once again feel the warmth of the sun on your face after the monsoons had passed. You no longer said prayers, you spoke with God. All veterans have these kind of stories and it's great what they're doing here at the History Center to capture them. Um, I'm just one veteran. Uh, this park is special to me because of my involvement in 2000. The Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association, a great, great bunch of guys. And um, to see it come to fruition means a lot. What I'd like to do is consecrate this special place. And the way I would like to do it is I've gathered soil from every place where our country has fought for freedom. And I'd like to start off with the American Revolution. Roland Hawthorne, a retired business executive, was also a former officer in the United States Navy. He is a direct descendant of a soldier from the Revolutionary War and is a member of several lineage and patriotic societies. He is Deputy Lieutenant Governor of the Society for Colonial Wars in the state of Georgia and historian for the General Nathan Green Chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution. This soil is from Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts, Trenton, New Jersey, the city, and at the point where Washington landed after crossing the, the Delaware, and readout number 10 at Yorktown, Virginia, where we ended, ended our fight for freedom in the Revolutionary War. Thank you. Representing World War I, Lee Weinstein, his uncle Saul Weinstein from Atlanta, served in France with the Allied Expeditionary Forces in 1918 under General Black Jack Pershing. Lee is representing soil from Germany and France. The World War II theater of operation. The European theater, represented by retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Hap Chandler. 
He served in the U.S. Army Air Forces in World War II, flying 35 missions as a navigator on a B-24 bomber, and with the U.S. Air Force in Korea, flying 50 missions in a B-26 bomber. Lieutenant Colonel Chandler is placing in the helmet soil from France and Germany. Thanks very much, Hap. The Pacific Theater, represented by Mr. Clarence Robinson. He served in Company D, 2nd Battalion, 27th Marine Regiment, and 5th Marine Division on the island of Iwo Jima. His company was one of the first to land on the beach and fought for 33 days against entrenched Japanese forces. He returned to the island of Iwo Jima in 1995 for the 50th anniversary of that battle and gathered black sand from that beach. He is presenting that sand and soil from Mount Suribachi, Guam, Wake Island, Peleliu, Saipan, and Northfield at Tinian Island where the Enola Gay departed for its mission to Japan. Thanks, Mr. Robinson. The Berlin Airlift is represented by Master Sergeant Paul Shirley who served with the U.S. Air Force for over 20 years, an assignment which took him from Germany to Washington, D.C., where he helped form the then, and then, then support the presidential airlift mission and then the Air Force Base. This unit became the presidential flight detachment. He served on the Berlin, Berlin Airlift mission in 1949 and represents our country's efforts in the Cold War and today presents pieces of the Berlin Wall from Germany and soil from Germany. Thanks a lot. Representing soil from Korea is Major Robert McCummins, who served in the U.S. Army and fought in Korea with the 92nd Field Artillery Regiment of the 9th Corps Artillery Group in the 8th United States Army throughout the Korean Peninsula. Major McCummins served on active duty and in the Army Reserves before his retirement. Bob was a member of the Atlanta History Center Steering Committee for this memorial. Representing Vietnam, Bringing soil from Quan Loi, China Beach, Quezon, Vietnam, is Mr. Brian Tate, who started his service in Vietnam in 1969 as a platoon staff sergeant with 1st Platoon Company C, 2nd Battalion, 28th Infantry Regiment of the 1st Infantry Division, Big Red 1. He was recommended for a battlefield commission by his battalion commander. In February of 1970, he transferred to the 173rd Airborne Brigade separate as NCIC before returning to the continental United States in July of 70. Brian is a past president of the Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association and was also on the Atlanta History Center Veterans History Committee. Thanks a lot, Brian. Representing the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan, Sergeant First Class Justin Brooks. He's representing the efforts of the United States in Iraq and Afghanistan. Sergeant Brooks served in Basra, Iraq from 2003 to 2004 and in Talafar, Iraq from 2006 to 2000, 2007, and he served in Jalal, Jalalabad, Afghanistan in 2009 to 2010, and in Bagram, Afghanistan from 2012 to 2013. He is presenting soil from Tikrit, Iraq, and the Kordal Valley of Afghanistan. Representing our MIA families and the Gold Star families is Susan Klotfelter Jemison. Her brother, Chief Warrant Officer Mark Plattfelter, served as a Cobra helicopter pilot with the 361st Aerial Weapons Company of the 1st Aviation Brigade in Vietnam. His unit provided uh, support to the 5th Special Forces Group and Special Operations elements working throughout Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Chief Warrant Officer Plattfelter earned three distinguished flying crosses and was shot down twice prior to flying a support mission for a unit moving along a highway between Binh Het and Dak Tho, Vietnam. On 16 June 1969, he was shot down for the third time and was listed as missing in action. The enemy forces in the area precluded efforts to locate Mark until weeks later, when he was confirmed as killed in action. Susan placed soil from Arlington National Cemetery in the helmet. We live by the creed, never forget, and it's an honor to have Susan with us here today. She stands for all who have given their lives and remain unaccounted for. It represents those families as well. Standing before us now, is a representation of our country's timeline for freedom, from the Revolutionary War to our efforts in Afghanistan, as well as the cost of that freedom. Sergeant First Class Books and Mr. Hawthorne will now mix soil made sacred by the brave actions and the blood of those who have gone in harm's way for our great country. Sergeant Brooks is carrying the helmet that my father wore ashore at Omaha Beach on D-Day. And Mr. Hawthorne will use the helmet worn by Colonel Ruggles. 
please. The soil will now be dispersed in the park to provide all visitors with a tangible link to those who represented our country's efforts to secure and preserve freedom. To complete this dedication, we also recognize the courage and sacrifice of those who served in the United States Navy throughout our country's history. Susan will now disperse water from the Hudson River, the Chesapeake Bay, the Atlantic Ocean, and Pearl Harbor. This water not only recognizes the unfaltering service of our Navy brothers in arms, but is symbolic of the tears we've shed for those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom and for those who remain unaccounted for. Beneath the great seal of the United States positioned in the center of the, the park walkway, thank you, Susan, is a time capsule that has every sample of this soil in it. It's centrally located on the walkway leading to the Atlanta History Center so that those who walk through this park to enter the History Center will cross over the sacred soil and remember all those who have served their country. At this time, I'd like to ask our piper, Tom Crawford, to position himself at the point of the walkway as he has done so. And this concludes our ceremony. I'd again like to thank you for attending and to all veterans, families of veterans and Gold Star family members on behalf of the Atlanta History Center and the Home Depot Foundation, welcome to your park. Our, Our Piper will now lead us into the History Center for some refreshments. Thank you for being here. If you're not a member of the Atlanta History Center, I strongly encourage you to join. Just look at what you get. Thanks very much for being here. This looks good. Huh? Where are you based? Memorial Day. <laughs> across from, from this park and the message that it sends to people who will be coming to the History Center. I think the people need to understand that uh, for those who fought for it, life as a flavor that protected never knows. Tom Yeary. Yes. Y E A R I A. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Yeary. Thank you. Let me give you a card, too. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.